So now on to defining love. It's going to take a lot of videos to define this fully in respect to all areas of our life, okay? In this video, I'm just going to give the basic definition of love. And I was very, very lucky in that I got the basic definition of love when I was just 20 years old. I got it handed to me. I was reading a lesson of Yogananda and he said, all love is based on utility. Even our love for God is because He's useful to us. And I thought, that doesn't make any sense at all. That is so selfish. I love it because it's useful. I mean, how selfish do you want me to be, Yogananda? That is not me. I'm not a selfish bastard like that. That is not love. You don't know what love is. You know, you know all these other things. You've told me all these other things. And every time I said, oh yeah, I got it. It makes sense to me. I like it. I believe it. it works for me. But you're wrong here. You don't know what love is. But it's okay. I don't blame you. You know, you're a sannyasi. What do you know about love? You know, I can't expect you to know about love as a monk. I know more about love because I'm 20 years old. I haven't had a girlfriend yet. And I have Rahu in the seventh house. So don't you tell me about love. That was my attitude, right? 30 some years or so later, wherever, you know, 30, about 30 years later, I'm like, wow. Yogananda was right. Love is based on utility. All love, he said, is based on utility. And it's really the bottom line statement. If it's not useful, it's not love. Okay? So, whatever type of love we're dealing with, whether it's the love of Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Sun, Moon, Mercury, or Saturn, if it's not useful, it's not love. It's something else. Okay? It's something else. And a lot of you are not going to agree with me. I get it. I remember every time I learned something great from Young Ananda, I said, oh, thanks again. Too bad you don't know what love is. And every time, I spent years trying to figure out why, why he meant that. Like, oh, he meant it in this situation. And then I learned human design. And I said, oh, this is tribal love. It's not, it's not love for the other type. If you're tribal circuits and you're tribal being, this is love. But if you're an individual being like me, this is not love. <laughs> I try to find loopholes to let him have his say and be right somewhere. And let me hold on to a non-working definition of love. Um, but I've had to realize, ultimately I learned that, yes, the truth is, Yogananda said it, all love is based on utility. Even the love of Saturn is based on usefulness. Okay. So when you start looking at the love in your life, and you start making choices in your life, the first question you ask yourself is, is this useful? And if the answer is yes, then you, it's love. If the answer is no, it's not love. Isn't that amazing? It's that simple. Now, when you ask yourself, when you're when you're wanting to choose Venus love, you ask yourself that question in a different way than when you're asking Mars love, or when you're trying to do Mars love, or Jupiter love, or Saturn love, or any of these loves. But we always ask that question, is this useful? In Venus love we ask, is this useful and is this useful? In Mars love we ask, is this useful and this useful? In Jupiter, Jupiter love we ask, is this useful just once? Okay, so we always need to ask that question, but we need to ask it in different ways in respect to the different loves available to us. Okay, and I'll explain each of those things. The thing we have to ask ourselves to see, what love am I dealing with here? Okay, this will become more clear as we continue. Okay, in a moment, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the Venus love as a foundation of love, so you can understand that picture. And that's the picture that's most important for us to understand. It's the most important one for us to have. It's the only one most of you all want. But once you have that, embracing the other ones is going to do one simple thing. It's going to let you have more love in your life. Okay, so in everything you do, you need to start asking yourself the question, is this useful? You go to work. Is this useful? Is it useful for me to go to work? Then it's love. 
You go to work and you, and you go, am I useful here? If the answer is yes, work loves you. If the answer is no, work don't love you. It's not love then. Okay? When you eat something, you, I want to eat love too. I mean, you want to eat love or you want to eat something else, right? I mean, I'm talking about love in every part of your life. So when you eat something and you grab the Twinkie, you grab the Twix, you know, you grab the, you know, the sweet junk. And you go, oh, I love Twix. Oh, I love Twinkies. I love pie. I love whatever. Ask yourself, is it useful for me to eat a Twinkie? The answer is no, it's not useful, which means it's not love. You used that word love incorrectly. Okay? You use that love to say something, I'm going to take something that's going to hurt me, that's going to rot my teeth out, give me hypoglycemia, give me candida, make me depressed in the long run. And you use the word love for that, for something that was completely, not only not useful, but actually harmful. Do you see what a dirty word love is? Okay. We use love in so many dirty ways. I'm not going to talk about all the dirty ways we use it because I'll never get done. Because I have to talk about everyone's definition of dirty love. I'm just going to talk about a true definition. And forget it. Well, all the other definitions are not love. So that's what you have to ask yourself. Every time you grab some food, do you want to have an experience of love or not? So you ask yourself, is this useful to eat this? Does it help me? Does it support me in being what I am? Does it support me in my goals? Oh, and we'll talk about this more in a moment. Um, that's what we have to ask ourselves. And if the answer is no, it's not useful to me because it's not doing this or it's not doing that or it's doing the opposite, then if we partake of it, we are inviting something that's not love in our lives, and all of a sudden, we have less love in our life. We have less joy in our life. So when you eat the Twinkie, you're hurting yourself. Your body is not going to have the energy to have a joyful experience. Your body might be at the dentist getting drilled. You know? And then you have to move on to the school of hard love, which nobody wants. So, in everything you do, get in the habit of it. Is this useful to me? I want to watch TV. Is it useful to me? Well, I'm just sort of bored. It's not really useful. I'm just bored. Okay, it's not love. Don't do it. But the answer is, I'm friggin' exhausted. I have so much on my mind. It would be really useful for me to just chill for a while and recuperate and take a break. Then I'll feel better and I'll get back to, you know, what I need to do after I refresh a little. Okay, that's useful. Watch TV. It's an act of love. Okay? Everything we do can be an act of love or not. And how do we know? You simply ask yourself, is it useful? Same with the people. Every person in our lives can be an act of love. And we just have to ask the question, is it useful? And when it comes to people, the questions are very intricate, okay? Because when it comes to, um, and that's why we're going to talk about all these different types of love, okay? But the first thing to understand is that love is what's useful. Loving something that's not useful is, is a demonstration of a severe degree of lack of self-love. The only reason we love what's not useful is because we don't have self-love. That's why, you know, Yogananda said all love is based on utility. It's what's useful. That's why Jesus said, love yourself and then your neighbor. So your neighbor is everything around you. Are you choosing love with all those things? Well, to do that, you have to love yourself first. Just like Jesus said. And if we're choosing things that are not love, and saying, I love sugar, I love the guy who punches me in the face, I love 
the person who makes me feel incompetent, that shows one thing and one thing only. You haven't loved yourself. And so you're not able to choose love. Love is useful. What kind of person gives themselves what's useful? What kind of person makes useful choices? person who loves themselves. So you see what I didn't grasp when Yogananda told me the meaning of love? Well, it's not, it's not selfish to have what's useful. It's a demonstration of self-love. And without self-love, we're not going anywhere nice. Without self-love, we won't even let God step in and love us. Okay? So in our lives, with everything in our lives, God's given us an opportunity to choose love. And once we get good at that, then we can choose love in all things. And then we can have the love of God too, because the love of God is also ultimately a choice we give ourselves. Imagine the self-love required to let ourselves truly be connected to God. You know, to have that biggest, largest, most beautiful gift of all. And here we are, choosing sugar, choosing Twinkies over carrots, right? So, always ask yourself, before you do anything, is this useful? If it's not, it's not love. Why do it? As, now, right now, some things might not seem useful, but you, need, you know you have to choose them. Well, they're love, too. They are useful. You just don't understand how they're useful yet. By the time we get done with the full definition of love, we will, this will be clear. Okay, but right now, the bottom line is, it's useful. If it's not useful, it's not love. Hammer that into your head and start using that as your lens. You get your love, is this useful lens out. And you look at it and go, this is my useful lens. It lets me see if something's useful. If something's useful, it glows pink. It's love. That's the beginning. That's when I, how I started. I finally started saying, okay, I'm going to look and see if it's useful. And it can be useful materially, it can be useful emotionally, and it can be useful spiritually. And it can be useful in all three. Whether it's one, two, or all three, if it's there, if it's useful in one of those areas, then it's love. Okay? Alright, the next video is going to be about the love we're most looking for, the most important love. And that's the love of Venus. That's the sustainable, committed love. It's the love of what we commit to, that we can commit to, because it's sustainable love. We all need a sustainable love in our life. That's why we all want it the most, is when we're all running around looking for. Because that a sustainable love, what I call a working love, versus a non-working disaster, is the foundation of, of our lives. When we're on that foundation, wow, our life is so much better. Without that foundation, we're in trouble. Okay? Alright, so that'll be the next video. Thank you.